Hello and welcome to Come On Now Ministries. Come on, somebody. Today I just want to kind of talk about some issues that uh, I kind of go over my head a lot about life in general, uh, Christianity, uh, Christians in, in general. Um, I just want to talk about <clears throat> uh, about a little topics kind of mixed together. Um, really, I've been going through a lot for the last two and a half years. And uh, as a Christian man, and uh, had a lot of emotional stuff going on and uh, <clears throat> trying to grasp the concepts and things in my own personal life. And through this, um, really have uh, grown to appreciate the gospel, I think, even more so now. Because sometimes we have to go down in life in order to come back up in life. And uh, sometimes through our own sin or through our own actions, uh, whether it be uh, 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 correct or not, you know, it's a learning curve. Uh, and so I just want to kind of talk about these issues. I'm really compassionate. I'm really passionate about um, my walk with Christ. Uh, I'm passionate about um, um, restoration in my marriage. I'm passionate about um, so many things uh, relating to the gospel. Uh, also, sometimes getting confused with some issues. <clears throat> but I realize as I go through this journey of this walk, um, so many people are probably going through the same things I'm going through. Why, God? Why Why this has not happened yet, God? Why you have not answered my prayers yet, God? Why uh, am I going through, uh, and I'll use the word hell, um, why is this pain so heavy? But I think sometimes if we look back, we can see where we kind of messed up. And so sometimes we have to go through this mess in order to get blessed. Um, <clears throat> but my situation with my marriage, um, my wife divorced me. And uh, I still say today there's no legitimate reasoning. Uh, but the enemy becomes to kill, steal, and destroy. <clears throat> And it does that in many different ways. And sometimes, and I think, and I can, and I feel like in our situation, uh, it was a deep communication because we had a ministry and uh, to the, some of the younger people in our lives, to uh, <clears throat> our son and his beautiful wife. And we just had, we just had a ministry there uh, for some other people in our lives, our nieces and nephews. And, uh, and, but we didn't communicate the stuff we need to communicate for ourselves. So it's so hard to go through this life like this and to be in this point of, of, of after 20 years of marriage. But <clears throat> so many Christians uh, today are acting like the world and, and, and that's, that's the sad part about it. Um, and so many people on the Christian side of things or, 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 or godly things or side of things, they're walking away from the marriages like the world is. And we're supposed to be different from the world. And we're supposed to have an understanding that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But we allow our emotions to get in the way. We allow finances to get in the way. We allow other people to get in the way. And most of all, we allow the enemy, as I said earlier, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But that scripture is so beautiful because it says, Jesus, I come and give life, life more abundantly. But we don't get to the abundant part sometimes until we go through the harsh part. The Bible says a man shall reap what he has sown. You can't get away. If you're reaping, if you're sowing bad seeds, you're going to reap a bad harvest, period. And so <clears throat> we need to understand that God is serious about his word. God will not be mocked. We can't make other stuff up. We just can't put what we want on God's word and say, well, God understands. You know, we, we, we have, we cheap, we have cheap, cheap grace, as I call it, very cheap grace when we just do what we want to do. <clears throat> And don't think we're going to be held accountable. And let me go back to the word Christian. And uh, I was sharing with somebody that uh, a guy, on the, I heard a guy on, on a video say, we need to be crystallized. That means if we say we're a Christian, we need to be Christ-like. We need to be so focused and so in tune with Christ. That's our Christian walk. Our Christian walk is to uh, obey God, obey his word. His word is already there. There's no other word. It is his word. And so when we reach out and we do all the stuff that's dangerous to our spirit and to our mind, we have a tendency to get out of God's will. 
we can't do what we want to do as Christians. We just can't go out here and, and, and let our emotions take over everything. And I've done that. I've allowed my emotions to take over in my life sometimes, man. This situation I went through these last two years have rocked my world. Uh, and I'll say that even today, though, even today, though, I'm learning that I can't let my emotions dictate everything. Emotions are there. God gave us the emotions, but the emotions should never overkill the word in our lives. The word should always be first, and we should be seeking Jesus instead of ourselves and get the help that we need in our relationships. I see so many broken marriages. I see so many women and men in these uh, Christian marriages that are having problems because either the wife don't want to do right, or the husband don't do right, or both don't want to do right. And that's not what Christ is about. Christ said, what well, he put together, let no man pull asunder. And I'm talking about <clears throat> pulling asunder. See, a piece of paper on the earth means nothing to God because you made a covenant with God. You made a covenant with your wife or your spouse. And that's the that's the issue. See, so in my my personal walk, even though uh, she went this far, I tell her all the time, I'm still married to you because I made a covenant with God, and I can't break my covenant with God or with you just because you feel a certain way, or you're allowing the enemy to run roughshod all over you and take control of your mindset. See, if we put nothing in our minds that's godly, we're going to act as the world acts. And we get our emotions take over, our anger, our frustration, our unforgiveness. This is what's going to happen to us, every one of us. Every one of us. And I'm so tired of Christians playing this two-faced role as though their life is all perfect and everything is okay. And um, they don't want to be honest with themselves. The Bible says the truth shall set you free. It ain't just the word of God that sets you free. It's the truth that comes out of your mouth. It's what you spill out. It's not what goes in the body to deceive it. It's what comes out of it. So a man thinking his heart, so is he. If you can't, if you if you don't believe in something, you won't fight for something. So a man thinking in his heart, so is he. If you're thinking in your heart, you're thinking in your mind at the same time, they're one connected. And when you go against that very thing, you are beginning to fight against yourself. A house divided cannot stand. Christ is trying to tell us, look, get your house in order because I'm soon to come back. And even let's say if you didn't come back for another 10, 15 years, your life could be taken out. I just had COVID really, really bad. And I really thought I was going to die. I was losing breath and I was in so much pain. It was ridiculous. And I had to evaluate my life at that moment. I said, Lord, please don't let me die like this. Please don't let me die like this. But let me tell you something. When you're close to death, and you know that you're close to death, it makes you think about life differently. But if you don't know death is coming, because God still has the God has your life in his hand. You can go out here, old Christian person. You can live your life any way you think you want to. You can live a, a life of, of sin, disobedient to God. And you think that you're okay coming down the road and you can die in your car. No time for repentance. Let's go back what the word says. The, bird, the word says in Luke 13, chapter, chapter 13, verses three and five, repent or likewise perish. Repent or likewise perish. What if you don't have a chance to repent? What's going to happen to you? It said perish. That means away from God. And over the book of Matthew, many are going to say in that last day, Lord, but I preached in your name. Lord, I was a good Christian. I read my word and I prayed over my food and, and, and I told somebody about Jesus. Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. You're workers of iniquity. When we're not obedient to God, we're living against God. When God tells you to do something and you don't do it, you're not in his will. I don't know why we so it's so hard for us to understand that. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Isn't that what he said? So do you really love God or do you love yourself? Or do you love the things of this world? You need a bigger house. You need more money and a car. We all know we need 
a, a, a job. We all know we need finances. That's, that's, that's a natural thing we have to have to live. But if we're laying up treasures on earth, oh my God, I'm scared for a lot of people in the church today. They got to have the latest car, the latest phone, the phone, latest everything. But they're not laying anything up in, in heaven. They're laying their treasures on the earth. I'm speaking to marriages. I'm speaking to people who are in the church who are just living the life by curiosity day by day, thinking they're okay. If you have unforgiveness in your heart to a brother, the Bible says if you don't love your brother, you don't love God. So how is it that we want forgiveness from others, but we can't forgive those? How is it we want mercy and grace from God, but we won't give anybody else mercy and grace? I told you this subject can be about a lot, of, a lot of little things mixed up, even with the marriage and everything else. Because this one's been on my heart for a while now. I talk to my friends about this, and it's on my mind daily. Are we lining up with the will of God? Are we doing our own will? We doing our own thing. You can't love God and go against God. You can't do it. You're not supposed to do it. Old child of God. Are you really serving God? The Bible says you speak me from your lips, but yet your heart is far away from me. Your heart is far away from me. That's a bad place to be. That goes back to that scripture in Matthew chapter 7. I never knew you. You're workers of iniquity. So who are you serving today? People say stuff like, well, I don't want to be alone. And, you know, I deserve to be happy. And, okay, I understand what you're saying. I like to be happy too. All of us like to be happy. If you don't want to be happy, something's wrong with you. But how are you going to be happy? Are you going to be happy in the things of this world or the things of God? Let me go back to marriage for a second. Marriage is an institution. Marriage is a covenant between God and the individuals who got married. Nobody else. But it's a covenant of promise to love for better or worse, richer and poor, poor, sickness and health. That's a covenant. It's a promise you made to God. And no matter what happens in our marriage, we're going to stick this thing out to death, do us part. So many people are walking away because they're not honoring the covenant, the promise they made to God. What if God said, you know, I take back my promises. I take back my salvation. You no longer under the promise. Why are you no longer under the promise? Because you walked away from God. If God took this, took his word from you, took everything away from you that he promised you, God would be a liar. So us people who go through marriages and go through situations where they broke their covenant, they're a liar. They become a liar at that point because they couldn't keep their word. I'm not talking about a marriage where a man is beating on a woman and the woman is cheating on the man all the time. I'm not talking about stuff like that. Those things are kind of hard to reconcile. But people who go through emotional stuff, not understanding one another, a lack, a deep lack of communication, get it together. Don't be in my position. You know, and I, 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 I like I said, I'm bouncing around a little bit because I got it on my mind. So if I go back to marriage and go back to something else, just hold on, just listen to me. I'm making my point. And my point is, it's about Jesus, not just us. And when you break a marriage up, you're affecting so many people that looked up to you at one time or another. You're looking at, you, 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 you have a ripple effect that you can't even understand. If you ever throw a rock across the water that skips and it makes that long ripple effect, that water, how far that water is, is most likely how far that ripple is going to go. That's far. That's deep. You hurt so many people. Because you're living in your emotions. You don't think God can heal this. Where is your faith at? Where is your faith? I see the little rings in my glasses. Y'all have to kind of excuse that a little bit. It's kind of funny. But listen. Don't play with your soul. The devil will fool you to your grave. He comes to kill, 
steal, and destroy. He doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about your, your children. All he wants to do is destroy your soul. If he can get your mind, he's got you. Because once it gets in your heart and it sinks in, it's hard to pull out. It's like being in a fake religion, a fake relationship. You cannot live your life like this. We got to get this thing together. And I talked about how sick I was in this bed. I was so sick in this bed. My wife called me. Yeah, she's still my wife. I told y'all before, I'm going to come between God and her. She's still my wife. Well, God put together that no man pull us under. But I was so sick in this bed. I've never felt like that in my life. And I've been through a lot in my life, the surgeries and everything. But man, my skin felt like it was pulling apart, like glass was cutting it, and I was hot and cold at the same time. I felt like I just couldn't do nothing else. But I knew in my heart that I didn't want to die like this. So the Lord spared me some more time on this earth to get things right. Listen to me. I'm crying out to whoever watches this video. Listen to me. This is real, y'all. Hell is real. So a few minutes of pleasure to go and, and, and destroy your whole life. We've all been down that road, especially if we come from the streets. We know we know ain't nothing out there. And you women who have a good man, or you men who have good women, why are you leaving them for, for emotional stuff? Cut that out. I'm talking about Christian people. Really, people don't care. But a child of God, supposed to be a child of God, we are supposed to do what we're supposed to do. Yeah, we're not perfect people. But I realize, be ye holy, for I am holy. So that means God can keep you, and he can build you up, and he can turn things around for you. But you got to understand. God is in charge. Somebody told me today, you know, I talked to somebody earlier today, had a good conversation. And we were talking about some deep issues. And communication was one of them. And in your marriages, men, we don't always hear what our wives say. Because we think differently from them. And women realize that. We don't always know what's in your mind. We don't know. We don't know everything. We can't because we're with you all the time. That means we assume that we know everything that you like. Communicate that with your husband. Communicate that with your wife. So you don't want to be in a situation that's bad. This is not a good thing that has happened to me and to my wife. We make choices. But those choices can be changed if we do the right thing. God can restore broken families, broken marriages. He can restore all that if you give him that chance. See, your free will, you have all for have free will. But your free will can lead you to destruction. Because you're making all these crazy choices based on emotional stuff. You know, when I go to church and I listen to these people in the church, so many hate and hatred in the church. So many people just just have anger in the church. So many people don't like one another in the church. You're not always going to agree with somebody with what they talk about, what they say over the pulpit. But I'm going to tell you something. I've been wrong in my life. I had an issue with my own pastor at one time. I had to, I had to, I had to ask for forgiveness. I had to repent. He's a man like me. He, he's trying to get to heaven. And he's trying to teach us how to get there. I would not look at him the same anymore, meaning judgmentally. <clears throat> I love him. I always will. But we got to stop looking at this stuff on a surface issue. See, the devil has us so blinded by stupid stuff. <clears throat> oh, real stupid stuff. Why did he say that? Why did she say that? Oh, he don't make enough money. She don't do this. She don't do that. Miss me with all that. That's garbage. Come on now, somebody. 
It's garbage. <clears throat> I'm not trying to be some kind of philosopher or some kind of super Christian because I'm not. I'm just a man trying to make it to heaven. I'm a man who wants to restore his marriage for the right reasons because God honors that. And when you do somebody wrong, whether it be marriage or friendship, get it right with God. The Bible says if you have an ought against any, you go to that person. If they don't receive you, you take somebody else with you. And then the third thing, go to the church. Why we can't do stuff like that to squash all this so the enemy won't come in like a flood and take over our lives? He has taken over my marriage, and I'm mad. I'm mad to the, to the heels. I'm mad all over about this situation. But all I can do now is pray for my wife. Pray for restoration. Pray to restore other people's marriages. Pray to restore friendships. I've hurt some friends along the way in the last two years. People I love, dearly love, I still love them today. I made mistakes. I said some things I probably shouldn't have said. Because I was angry when this stuff came up in my life. I was angry when, man, I was hit with this separation at first. Because divorce has only been like four months now, three and a half months, four months. But it's not necessary. It's not necessary. So the, when I was speaking them words out, I was speaking out of anger and frustration and hurt and pain. That's what I'm telling you sometimes. Sometimes we got to look at the whole situation, not just a part of a situation. Why is Paul acting like that? Why is he saying stuff like that? Look at where I'm coming from. I'm coming from a place of pain. And you know, when we come from a place of pain, we don't always say the right thing. So to anybody listening to this video, and you know me, and I hurt your feelings or hurt you, I'm truly sorry. I'm truly sorry. Especially those who are close to me. I don't want to hurt anybody. I'm not here for that. I want to love you, love on you. I want to be close to you as possible. I believe in um, friendships, and I believe in when you tell somebody you love them, you love them with whole, your whole heart. I believe that. Even though we might have disagreements, may not understand each other sometimes, it's okay. It's okay. But don't let it be a sour thorn in your side where you can't get rid of it. Because then you're living a lie. Again, the devil has a soul fooled and tricked on just doing whatever he wants to do. But we're so silly enough to buy into it. Hook, line, and sinker, we buy into it. It's sad. We got to get this thing together, everybody. You know, I will talk a little. I really want the strong man because but it's late at night I'm trying to do this video. And I just want people to understand, man. Well, officers are hurting. A lot of people go through a lot of stuff. And it's sad. And I want to say this openly again to, to my wife. I love you with all my heart. I've never stopped loving you. The Bible says a man should, uh, Christ died for the church. He laid down his life. How much more shall I lay my life down for her? And I will still do that today, even though she put the paperwork in. Because that's what real love is about. Real love is about, it's not about all this phony stuff. Anybody can go out here, and I can go out here right now and find another woman, but that's not what God wants me to do. God wants me to honor my vow. That's what I'm trying to do the best I can. That's the best I can. Struggling to just Hold on sometimes, but knowing that God can make a change. You know, my wife probably don't understand me sometimes. Because she, I don't know, sometimes I think she thinks I'm crazy about her, but I am crazy about her in the right way. The right way. God gave me an angel. He gave me a woman that I can't even comprehend how I love her so much. And I tell her all the time, God put a love in my heart for you that I can't even understand. Because when this broke my heart, I wanted to get out of this situation. I wanted to get away from it as much as possible. But God would not release me because he told me to marry her and for her to marry me. She knows this. So why are we still here? Why are we still separated when God spoken, has spoken? And it's not just for marriages. This is for everything in life that we do. We're all disobedient to God. 
When you're disobedient to God, you're not in his will. You're living a sinful life. People don't understand that. We don't understand it. And we, we have, again, we go back to this cheap grace. And, oh, I just ask God to forgive me. He'll, he'll forgive me for anything. Okay, he will. If it's true, if it's real, if it's from your heart, your actions will speak louder than your words. Hello, somebody. That's why he said you knew you spoke to me with your lips, but yet your your heart is far away from me. You just did a lip service. Where's your action at? Faith is an action word. Repentance is an action word. That's what it is. It's not just a word, it's an action word. You must produce something, you must do something right. The Bible says no to do right, no to do good, but to do wrong is a sin. You haven't repented. You're still living in sin. Come on, somebody. Hear what I'm saying to you. I used marriage in this in, in this video. I talked about friendships in this video. The church folks in this video. There's so many people that we are close to that are sitting in these churches going straight to hell. Well, brother, you can't say, oh, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Because I see their actions. If you ain't getting it together, you're either in this thing or you're out of this thing. You do not hold the power of your life in your hands. God does. He could have let me go on this bed a week and a half ago. I'd have been gone, not here today, not talking to nobody. That's why I'm so adamant about this stuff we have in our lives. It means nothing. You will never, ever see a U-Haul behind a hearse. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. You won't see it. You won't see it. You can't take this stuff with you. You can't take the latest phone with you. You can't take the, their car with you. You can't take your money with you. It's stupid. It's a stupid thought process. But the enemy has you believe in all this stuff. is more important than him, than God, and his word. Don't fool yourself. Please don't fool yourself. Please don't fool yourself. Don't die for this stuff. Die for Christ. Die for Christ. And your children are being affected by divorce. Your children are being affected by your parents who are not acting right, who go to church and, and, and sing a song in church and, and live like hell, hell cats at home. You're not doing your kids any service. You're not showing them the power of God. I think it said over in 1 Peter, they deny the power thereof. They look good. They dress up good. They talk good. But they don't deny. They deny the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Why are we sitting here today? Why am I sitting here talking to you today about this? Because I'm compassionate about this. I'm very passionate about all this. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. God got a plan for my life. He has a plan for my marriage. If my wife will just do what God told her to do, everything will open up. It'll blossom. It's a little work. Of course, there's got to be some work in there. And I'm talking about my marriage because it's giving me the ideas of understanding. Listen, if she does the right thing like she's supposed to do, God will bless the marriage 100%. I know that. He will bring joy back in the marriage. He will bring more love back in this marriage. He will restore this thing a hundredfold. She will be like, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. And I say to make this point, not just in my marriage, but in my finances, he will take care of those. He'll take care of your finances. He'll take care of your marriage, your kids. God is not, he's sitting here just beating us and berating us and beating us down. He's a loving God, but he's also a just God. Reaping and sowing, sowing and reaping, however you want to put it. That's what I'm trying to talk about. What are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do about your life today? Are you going to really live for the Lord? Are you going to have lip service all day long? I think over the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 3, I believe it is, two must walk together to agree. If you're agreeing with the world, you will be like the world. If you will be like walking with Christ, you will be Christ-like. If you want your marriage to be good, walk together, not separate. Not separate. Love your children like you're supposed to. 
Respect others like you're supposed to. Show the love of Christ every day in your life. You know what I do? I go to a store and I'll be feeling bad about all the stuff that's going on in my life. But I'm trying to make somebody laugh because they may be on the verge of suicide. They may be on the verge of, of, of breaking up their own homes. I don't know. We never know what people, are, what people are going through. That's why the Bible says we're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I want to be able to testify about how God restored my marriage and restored me. And I'm going to tell you something. When I came back here, we had moved and there was nothing in this apartment. Nothing in this apartment. Nothing. The first night I came back, I slept on the floor. I had to get some food. Uh, I didn't have a car when I first got back. I had nothing. Nothing. But I'll tell you this. God has kept me. He supplied my every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I said need, not wants. He supplied my every need that I needed. I got a business that I started. He's blessing my business. I got furniture in my house. I'm restoring the kitchen. I have two vans. I had a car, I sold the car. I have two vans. Being blessings. And let me tell you something. People are just blessing me with tools. I mean, it's 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 like God said, I got your back. Just hold on a little longer. I'm giving you my little testimony. Hold on a little longer. It's going to be all right. I know you're going through a hard time. I know you're frustrated. I know that you're upset about some things. I know your heart is broken. I know the tears that you've cried. My son, but everything's going to be all right. He has blessed me beyond measure. I have two bank accounts now. I pay my bills every month. I can go on a trip if I need to go on a trip. I got a ticket right now to go somewhere. So I had nothing, but God kept me. I got food in my refrigerator. I got a brand new refrigerator. I got a brand new, let me tell you, something. I got a brand new furniture, a refrigerator, stainless steel. I said, God, I want a stainless steel refrigerator, but I want to pay a lot of money for it. You know what I paid for that refrigerator? Absolutely nothing. Dual side, the whole nine, ice maker, the whole nine. Every time I ask God for something, he's done it for me. I said, God, I need, to get a, I need to get a van for work. How am I going to do this job that you told me to work with my hands? How am I going to do it? I need a van to put tools in. One night, a lady brought me a table saw, a chop saw, to my house at 9 o'clock at night. Her and her son brought it over here, put it in my garage. I didn't ask for it. The Lord knew what he was doing. He knew that I was going to work with my hands. You already told me to do it with my hands. I couldn't get a job. He said, work with your hands. I gave you a blessing. I'm telling y'all, God will bless your socks off. Even through my frustration, yet he's still blessing me. Even when I get mad at God, he's still yet blessing me. I don't want to be obedient to him. I want to serve him with my heart and not just my uh, lip service. I got TVs in this house, clothes. I'm telling y'all. God is restoring everything. And I thought to myself, God, why the divorce then, Lord? Why? Why does it keep going this way? And I know why now. She's not paying attention to God. She's not listening to what God told her to do. So she's still continuing on the path of destruction. And that's what it is, destruction. There's no other way to look at it. And let me tell y'all something, too. There... In, 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 and, I, and I say stuff to her like this. No other man can fit the mold that God made me for her. Everybody else is a counterfeit and a misfit. So if you're in your marriage and you're having issues and you are uh, trying to live right and do right, a uh, husband or wife, everybody, the other man is a counterfeit. The other woman is a counterfeit. They're not made for you. God didn't make a covenant between them. God made a covenant between you and your wife or your husband. So everybody else is counterfeit. But until that person understands, the prodigal understands that, until they get to understand that, and they're out there like the prodigal son, 
They might not have to eat a little slop before they get their mind woke up to do the right thing. And I pray that it doesn't happen. But the way it's going, it may happen to happen. They may have to go down in order to come back up. And that's sad. When people have warned them, and that's like business. People have warned you not to do certain things in business. Listen to them. My pastor told me and my wife before we left this state, I don't feel anointing. I don't think you should guys go. And I kind of brush it off like I'm ready to go. But now look at where I'm at now. See, if I were to heed the warning, I wouldn't be in this situation. People come in your lives for reasons. Sometimes we take it as lightly. Like I took a pastor's word, like, oh, pastor, that's his pastor. He don't want my to leave the church, you know, that kind of thing. He's always talking like that. But he was so right. I told him that today. He is so right. I should have never left. I should have never left here. If I knew my marriage was going to get like this, and I knew that my marriage needed healing, and I didn't really realize it, how much the healing it needed, look at me now. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm brokenhearted. I love this woman. This is my girl. This is my world. I love this girl, this woman. With all my heart, she knows it. She knows, she knows it. But when you have something good, make it better. Make it greater. Make it, make it like it's supposed to be. And so when you men and women in your relationship, build one another up. Lift each other up. Tell each other how you love one another. Husband, tell your wife how beautiful she is. She want to cuddle, cuddle with her. Rub her feet. Take her out to dinner. Do whatever. Cook for her at the house. Run her bath water. Do those things that she loves. But find out what she loves so you can continue to do those things. And wives, lift your husbands up. The Bible says for a woman to respect her husband, to honor your husband, to obey her husband. Remember that. He's not just saying that to make it sound like you're a slave. He's not saying that. He said, when you honor him, you're honoring me. Tell your husband he's somebody. Tell him he looks good. I ain't talking about no girlfriend, boyfriend crap. I'm talking about marriage. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Get this together. Understand this. This is real. This is real. And it's flip side of this. I'm going back and forth. It's the flip side of this. If you got a brother or sister in the church, lift that brother or sister up. Don't beat them down because they might have messed up in life. That's not your job. Your job is to, to love them and edify and pick them up, dust them off. Because it's quite as kept, we all fall short. We may not admit it, but I know I've fallen short in this last two and a half years. I went through some changes. Y'all hear me? I'm being real with you. I'm being honest with you. I'm not sure you caught nothing. Yeah, I am supposed to be a man of God. I was drinking. I got so mad I was cussing again. I ain't cussed in years. I started building hate in my heart. I had to get that out. But by the grace of God, through prayer and supplication and fasting, I'm, I'm in a better place now. I fasted for 40 days. Then I got off 40 days, I went to a two-week fast. I'm telling y'all, the enemy wants to kill you and destroy you. Do not let the enemy kill your family. Do not let them destroy you. Look at your family. Love your family. Love your brothers and sisters in the church. Reach out to somebody who's hurting. And let me say this too. I had to learn this a lesson. I'm a very friendly person with a whole lot of people. But I have to learn... Um, even though I'm legally not married, I'm still spiritually married to my wife, so I'm married. You know, she comes around. I, we went, when I went down to visit her, I had to realize, you know, it's about her. I'm married to her. Not talking to the waitress or waiters and trying to be funny. No, it's not about that. It's about her at that moment. So remember that when you're going through relationships with people or your significant other. Find out what they love. And cater to that. Find out what your brother needs and cater to that. Find out what your sister needs and cater to that. Sisters take care of sisters. Brothers take care of brothers. Period. Point blank. This is about love. This is about respect and honor one for another. 
It's about lifting one another on each other up in this walk. And remember, this is, this, this is not an easy walk. If it was easy, everybody could do it. But it's not easy. Find an accountability person that you can call and pray with, brother to brother, sister to sister. Somebody who's going to tell you the truth and not just because you're in your emotion. Oh, yeah, girl. Yeah, homeboy. No, just get rid of her, man. She ain't that. No. It's about marriage. This is all about ordained marriage from God. Don't just listen to anybody and everybody. You know what I'm saying? I hope and pray that you heard something I said today. And I hope and pray that you understand. I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to speak from my heart. And um, again, I love you all. I love the Lord. I, want, I just want to be obedient to God because I might die tonight. And never see y'all again. But you can watch this video over and over again. If you choose so. I'm not trying to be deep. I'm just trying to be real. I'm not here to patronize or whatever. I'm just here to be honest and real. And husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. He died for the church. Women, wives, respect your husbands. Prodigals, get it together because Jesus is coming soon. I am not giving up on my marriage for nobody. I made a covenant with God and made a covenant with her. And she knows this. But she needs to realize what she does have, not what she doesn't have. And that goes for the man too. Realize what you have at home. There's no need to search for anything out here. There's nothing out here in these streets. The same old, same old, same old game. Man looking for some woman he can lay up with. Woman looking up for some man she can lay up with. And if you call yourself a child of God, you can't do that. Let me tap on one more thing too before I go. I see a lot of people wearing crosses. That's a piece of metal on your neck supposed to represent something. But that metal is not going to save you around your neck. It's your personal relationship that you have with Christ that's going to make the difference. A personal relationship. That's it. Nothing else. And if you are out here clubbing, partying all the time, drinking up up the storm, you better ask yourself, are you are you really serving God? Or are you serving yourself? You already know the answer to that. If you're doing all this stuff on a continuous basis all the time, you are not living for God. There's a standard we must have. The moral decline in America has gone down. Homosexuality is running rampant. Transgender wants to call themselves whatever they call themselves. You are not a... If you're a man trying to be a woman, you are only a man and vice versa. There is no if and buts about it. Sin is sin. Homosexuality is a sin. You don't hate the person. You hate the sin. But you got to pray for people like that. But you can't be around people like that. That's a spirit. If you're around a bunch of people who are not saved and just drinking and doing all that, you need to be, if you, and you call yourself a child of God, water and oil don't mix. The Bible says, what does light have to do with darkness? Nothing. Nothing. They're two opposites. That's why it's called light and darkness. And if you're a child of God, you call yourself a child of God, you are here playing in the dark, you, you, better, you better repent and get your life together. You could die. Listen to me. People are dying all the time. Natural causes, COVID-19, whatever it out there, you can die in a car accident. You can die for somebody shooting you. You can die for somebody robbing you. You can die any moment. Does that make any sense to you? You can die. You can die. And you're on your way to hell. Hell is a real place. Do you understand that? Jesus talked about hell quite a bit. You are on your way to hell. Don't fool yourself. The Bible said all adulterers, all liars, all whoremongers, 
all gay people who still continue living that lifestyle, all these people will go to hell. All fornicators will go to hell. Unless you are truly repented and turn away from that thing. Don't fool yourselves, y'all. I used to be out there in the streets. I know how it's out there. Don't fool yourself. And for a five-minute thing of pleasure, oh, I, I got to have that man, I got to have that woman. No, you don't. That's a devil lying to you. Some of y'all think you can do better because that dude ain't making enough money. He's not where he needs to be uh, 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 in life. That's stupid. That's stupid. Because you can lose everything in life. Everything can be disappearing. And the way this government is, you might lose your 401k one. Your 401k, whatever they call it, 401k. You might lose your 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 your, your money from your government job that you retired on. Some of your people have lost so much money. Come on, somebody. Listen to what I'm saying to you. This video is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. But maybe it needs to be said. I have a daughter who's uh, a lesbian. I have to pray for her. I love my daughter, but I got to pray for her. She's on the way to hell. You can't change it unless she changes. Hello, somebody. Make that choice to do the right thing and stop living outside of the will of God. Stop doing it. I never knew you. You workers of iniquity. You want to hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Y'all, this is real. And Jesus is coming back soon. Look at the way the world is right now. Look at the condition it is in right now. But oh my God, you think you got all this time in the world to do what you want to do? Don't fool yourself. Let me pray and we'll go. Father, I thank you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for all things. I pray that somebody will hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. Lord, uh, my wife, uh, the, the prodigal, uh, the average Joe person on the street, a uh, 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 homosexual, uh, my son, his family, whoever hears this message, Father, I pray that it touches their heart, truly touches their heart, Father. Truly touches them, Father. They will turn away from their sin and they will get their lives right with you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this prayer. Please be blessed. And remember, Jesus loves you. He don't want you to go to hell. He wants you to be with him in heaven. So today, today is your choice. Somebody told me today, well, it's your choice. You, you made, no, you made a choice too. So you either choose life or you choose death. Choose life or choose death. That's your choice. Y'all be blessed.